Now, you know, just because you're busy doesn't mean you got to be stressed. I'm crazy busy right there with you, but it can be easier. Next time you're on a run, just make it more fun and listen to The Run with Manny Wilson. It's The Run with Manny Wilson podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson. So I got another topic here. I told y'all I was going to talk about LeBron James and him being kind of pissed off that he's not considered one of the best scorers when he's a top five scorer and so on. But before I touch too much on it, I want to play the clip for you. That way you can hear what he's really talking about. So we're going to drop the clip and then I'll come right back for you. Uh, a natural score. I like, I loved like getting my guys involved. I've always been that way. I've always like the, the, the point of seeing my teammate succeed off my pass or ha- having like, I've always been that type of guy. And to sit at the top of the food chain and the most points scored in, in the history of the game is like, it's weird to me. Like they don't never, they don't call, they don't ever call me. They don't ever call me. When they talk about the, the best scores of all time, they never mention my name. Did that piss you off? Yeah, it pissed me off. And that is the statement from LeBron on his show, The Shop, Uninterrupted. But first things first, LeBron James, statistically speaking, is the absolute the greatest to ever play the game. There's literally no debate about it. You can't make an argument that Jordan is better. You can't make an argument that Kobe is better if your argument is solely based on statistics. I want that to be known. His scoring ability is there. He's top five in scoring. Number three, to be exact, top five in free throw makes. Number four, to be exact, top 10 in all-time assists, top 10 in in steals. It's impeccable to compare anything to the amount of statistics he holds in terms of records and things that won't be touched. But when you particularly look at scoring and only scoring, we don't give him – the credit of being the best scorer or having the same scoring ability as Mike, Kobe, KD, Kyrie, simply for the fact that he gets his buckets differently than all of those guys got their buckets, especially early on in his career. Early on in his career, LeBron was mainly getting his buckets, driving to the hoop, using his physical attributes, using his strength, muscling people to the rim, and playing bully ball in a way. He could always make shots, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he could never make shots or couldn't score outside of the paint, but just not to the ability that a Kobe or Mike or a KD could do. Whenever he would score, it was predominantly in the paint. And that's why we don't hold him to that same standard. Because yes, it may take more energy to go get a paint bucket, but at the same time, it takes more skill to be able to hit somebody with a shimmy and use that fancy footwork that you put hours in the gym to learn. We didn't start seeing this fancy footwork from from LeBron until later in his career. Then we started to see him hit people with a couple of shimmies, a couple of step backs, maybe a spin move, his fancy step back, the one where he look at you, look head to toe, take a step back and pull up. We didn't start seeing any of this movement and and crafty type of moves from LeBron until he got older in his career. Early on, when he was in Cleveland, when he was in Miami, he's always been a shot maker. Great score. Could get to the line. Gonna, Gonna pound you down if he get inside. But ultimately, the way that he got his buckets is what separates this argument when you say, oh, well, LeBron is the best scorer. He has the most points. It, that's that's what makes people cringe about, no, he's not a better scorer than Mike. He's not a better scorer than Kobe. He cannot do it at the same ratio as Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving. That That's what makes people lose their mind in these arguments. And it's, it's no discredit to anyone at all because obviously scoring is, is an art. And when it comes down to it, it's, it's can you score in any type of position? We've seen him make his way and struggle and get a bucket in any type of position, but it's based on his physical attributes. If Brown was 6'3", would he be able to score the ball the same way? Answer that question. No, he would not. 
if if Kyrie Irving was 6'7 with the same ability that he has, he would be ruthless. He would be ruthless. He would damn near be Kevin Durant. But that's the main thing that separates the scoring ability and the respect of being able to score the ball at an efficient rate, although he may have the records, although he may hold everything down in terms of um, multiple records and, and having his having his mark on the all-time points and being at being in position to go ahead and attack uh, breaking Kareem's record of most points in a in an NBA regular season. This is why we still overlook him in certain times of being a great scorer. We know he can score the ball, but it's solely based on his physical attributes. And if it's not based on that anymore, because obviously he has more experience, a better IQ, can do more with the with the ball and the space on the floor and has better footwork, moves, etc. When he was younger and he had to score the ball, his go-to was using his physical attributes. Any other scores, they they, they relied on skill set. They relied on fancy footwork. They relied on making sure they were in the right position. They relied on getting to their specific spot on the floor. That is the that that's the key difference to the respect of scoring. We see guys go 20 points. We see bigs, and this is another example. We see bigs get 20 points. 12 rebounds, shooting 85% from the field. Just a rough example. But 85% from the field comes from 12 shots in the paint. It's not coming from spin jumpers. It's not coming from step backs. It's not coming from fadeaways. And this is why the breakdown of numbers does not tell at all. Because you can look at the numbers and see clearly, okay, well, LeBron has better this, LeBron has better that. Or you can even vice versa if you switch it. Okay, well, this center has better numbers than this guard because he's more efficient or he's doing this better. He's getting more points. He's not. He's missing less shots less or he's missing shots less, whatever the case may be. But ultimately, if you don't watch and see how these buckets are being made, then you have no argument. You have no true, you you have you have no argument, and it, it, it's it's quite that simple. When you compare to the the skill, and, and when you compare guard to guard, I should say, and you say, okay, well this guard, he's shooting seventy percent, this guard is shooting eighty percent. Then it gives you a little more leeway because it's like, okay, well what's the tendencies of this guard? Is he going to the hole more? Is he shooting more threes? Or is this other guy who's shooting 70%, what is he doing that his percentage is less off the same amount of shots in, in, in an if scenario, in an if type of scenario? But ultimately, just because you have the numbers um, to, to say you have the most points, it does not make you the better scorer. Now, don't be selfish. You might have a friend, family member, coworker who's on the run, too. So make sure they get to have the same amount of fun as you and send them this episode. It's The Run with Manny Wilson Podcast.